Alrighty, welcome to another three-on-three -three cube draft. It is myself, Folero, and Dan battling against Zurg, Team Jabro, and Quiniac. Quiniac likes drafting aggressive red decks, I've found. It's a three-on-three -three draft, and we've got Warhammer 40k cards. So Necron Deathmark is three black black for a 5-3 flash. And when it ETBs, you destroy a creature and target player mills three cards. Five mana, 5-3 flash kills any creature and mills three. Not bad. There's also Misty and Prismatic Vista. Currency Converter, Fiery Confluence, Tracker. This is kind of a weak, it's an overall strong pack, but there's no really big outliers. So I think I'm probably just gonna take the Misty Rainforest and then like Vista, Confluence, Steam Vents, probably Necron Deathmark, and maybe Currency Converter go, and I'll get back like, I don't know, Wasteland or Steam Core Scholar or Tireless Tracker. There's just nothing that completely stands out. Well, this pack does, it has Flash. There's also Emrakul and Birds of Paradise. I do like Flash. Taking Flash this early in a three-on-three -three when, when the person past me knows about Flash is a little bit dicey, but the alternative is, I guess, to take Birds of Paradise. I mean, I do like birds, but I think I'm just gonna take the Flash anyway. I'll, I'll, I'll run into the, 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 I'll fall into the trap, but I'm still actually gonna take Sylvan Karyatid here. I think uh, Karyatid's great. It goes well with Misty, and I think is better than like Samwise or Pilgrim or any of these other cards. So happy enough starting with that, even with the Flash. I think just specking on Flash is worth it. All right, and this pack has a Moloch. It's a red green X for a 2 2, and when it ETBs, it fights an opponent's creature. It also has Ravenous. Oh, it's a red green X for a 2 2 that comes into play with X plus one plus one counters. And if it comes into play with X is five or more, you draw a card, which is kind of nice. But I think I'm probably still just going to take Delighted Halfling here. There's also Titania, because I think Wasteland has a pretty good chance of wheeling. But I like Delighted Halfling a lot, and either Moloch or Titania coming back would be nice. Now I could actually take Natural Order. I have two creatures that can kind of feed into it. And Flash works well with Primus and uh, Atroxa, which are both fine for Natural Order. So yeah, I'm going to take the Natural Order here. It looks like green is pretty open. There's also a Lorien Revealed. I do like that card, but I think this looks pretty solid. I think there's a decent chance that I'm wheeling a Tireless Tracker. And um, I'm, who knows, Titania might come back twice. Ooh, Lictor is kind of interesting. <laughs> Four mana, 3-3 uh, three, three Flash. And on ETBs, if your opponent had a creature enter the battlefield under their control, you get a 3-3. Three, three. But I think this card is just okay. Um, and... Pretty good against aggro. You get two three threes for four at instant speed. There's also exploration, but I'm kind of interested in taking this Zern Orb. If Titania wheels, which it might, having Zern Orb Titania is awesome, especially with natural order to, to go get Titania. So I think I'm going to take Zern Orb over exploration here as a bit of a spec. Okay, Wasteland wheeled. Tracker didn't because no one took Necron Deathmark, but I think I just take Wasteland here. The Dryad Arbor natural order is nice. I think Dryad Arbor is actually going to come back again, if I had to guess. And then Green Suns, yeah, the Green Suns looks like a perfect pickup. All right, now I'm really hoping Titania comes back because I have a bunch of cards that work well with it. And Green seems very open here. All right, Avacyn's Pilgrim came back. I'm definitely going to be the pick with Green Suns and Natural Order over Territorial Kavu, Copperline Gorge, Curse Scroll. All right. Any Titanias? No, but there is a Moloch. I'll take Moloch still. It's not great with Green Suns or Natural Order, but it's pretty good just to cast, so... Happy enough with that, though obviously Titania would have been much better. Well, we spec'd on the Titania and didn't quite get there. Zernorb likely doomed for the sideboard here. And then here, there's no card I really want to play. Stern Scolding is good against me. Lavadar's probably going to be decent against me. I'm not that likely to play either one. There's also Godless Shrine in case I end up in like Domain somehow. Uh, I think I'm fine just taking the Godless Shrine and kind of specking on that. I guess Territorial Kavu is gone, which is unfortunate. Or at least I don't think it's going to wheel again, because that is a nice one. But there's a couple other domain cards that make Godless Shrine good. And then I just don't think I'm that likely to play Lava Dart or Stern Scolding. As things currently stand, I, I guess I wish I had the birds over the, the Flash, but I think we're okay. Um, how much do I care about passing Get Lost or Revoker? I'm thinking about taking this Inferno Titan. Looks kind of like a Titan deck. Oh, wow. Sensei's top came back. It's also Steam Core Scholar, but I don't have a lot to discard, so let's just take the Sensei's top. And I guess a green-white 
land is not completely crazy. Oh, late talisman. Okay. All right, pack two. Oh, there's a mana crypt. I guess I'll, I will be taking that. Mana crypt and <laughs> mostly crap passing a, a chrome mox, I guess. All right, that, that's a good pack to open. So we'll take the mana crypt here and still be on the lookout for something to flash or natural order in. This pack has not that much I'm that interested in, honestly. There's no good green cards. There's like the best cards probably from the Catacombs or Narset. I don't really want either of those. I could take Through the Breach. Emrakul's already gone. Through the Breach would be good with some of the green cards that I would look for, or some of the same cards I'd look for for Natural Order and Flash. But I don't really want to take Breach here. I could take Retrofitter. It's actually not a crazy Retrofitter deck. It's just so good with Mana Crypt and Mana Dorks. All right, I, I like Retrofitter. I think that's fine. And then now there's Itali. Itali is pretty good with Flash, especially with Sensei's top. You can actually set it up. There's also Urza, and I just took Retrofitter. Why don't I and a mana crypt? Why don't I just take Urza? I don't really see a reason not to. I already ha I also have a talisman and a, a Zurn orb in my sideboard. Okay, I'll take the Inferno Titan out for now. But I think there's a decent chance I'm going to want to play artifacts here. A little late audible into artifacts, but I, I think that's fine. And Atali's not going to wheel, but I would like my natural order and flash target to be one and the same, if possible. Though obviously I would still have been happy with Atali in my deck. Wow, okay, so this pack has Channel and Mana Leak. Channel Green Suns can be good. Channel Moloch, you make like a 8-8 draw card and kill their thing. Channel Urza is like kind of cute. There's also a Skydiver. There's also Sicarian Infiltrator. Tuna Blue for a 1-2 Flash, and ETBs you draw a card. And when you cast it, you can pay two. And for every two you pay, you get another copy of this, draw another card. I think I might just take Mana Leak though. There's like Sakari Infiltrator, Teferi, Skydiver Channel, and Sprawl. Like there's a ton of cards I want here, but Mana Leak is just awesome. So why don't we just take the Mana Leak? And then now there's Woodfall Primus to go with Fla Flash, Natural Order, and Green Suns. It's probably too greedy to do anything but take Woodfall Primus. There is, this is a good pack. There's Ponder, Volcanic, Sheldock, Path. Sign of Draco might come back. Yeah, I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna risk it. I think Woodfall Primus is too important here. And then now, there's Ramen up to go with Wasteland, and I guess with Xurnor, but I don't have the Fast Bond, so that doesn't matter. There's Candelabra, but I don't have Academy, and I, I don't have a, the, the high, highest hopes of getting one. This Restless Prairie doesn't look good. Uh, there's also Metamorph, which actually is fine with some of the stuff we've got going on, and there's Bank Buster. I think I like Bank Buster. This deck's got a pretty low curve. A lot of Mana Dorks. Bank Buster's good in that kind of deck. Oh, Spellseeker came back, and I can get Flash, Mana Leak, and Green Suns. Yeah, I think I like that more than just taking a third path Iconoclast or Talisman or anything like that. And then Ballista came back. And if I'm lucky, Tough Cookie will lap again, because there's two good bolts, two good white, uh, three good white cards, and a cut down. But I'm, I'm going to take the Ballista. It's a, such a good mana sink. And now we have Trinket Mage, which can go get Retrofitter, Ballista, Mana Crypt, Sensei's Top. I guess it could even get Zurin Orb, but all right. We, we've actually turned into a pretty good blue-green deck here. I'll splash Moloch off of, like, Karyatid and, you know, I guess just Karyatid for now. But I think Misty might be able to help at some point. Who knows? And here, oh, Sicarian Infiltrator came back. Okay, I was kind of hoping this one would. Th three mana for a 1-2 draw card is not the most impressed, but five mana for two one twos and draw two, especially with Urza to use them for mana since they're artifacts or... They gener or generate mana to cast a big infiltrator. I'm pretty interested in casting this. I think I like it more than Utopia Sprawl as a result. All right, so Sign of Draco came back, but we're at this point not looking super likely to be domain. We have no domain lands. There's two good black cards, Baleful Strix and Liliana. Well, Scrap Heap's kind of a black card. I think I'm just going to take Tail's End. It's a good sideboard card. There's some matchups where having a Tail's End can be really nice. They just have a bunch of legends in their deck, or or they have some good activated or triggered abilities to to counter. Tails end can can do some work. And here we've got a decent start to the natural order stuff. Oh, I think I'm just gonna take Candelabra. I'm gonna take the the high payoff card. If I get an academy, Candelabra is amazing. And I don't need another three drop in Thran Spider. I don't care about passing a Sunfall, especially since I feel like Zorg passed a decent amount of white in pack one, and then. Uh, 
Mindstone is fine, but I've got replacements. All right, Young Pyromancer isn't really what this deck's looking for. I, Underground Mortuary is kind of interesting because I can fetch it with Misty. Mightstone and Weakstone is really good if I get up to enough mana. I think I'll take the Mightstone and Weakstone. All right, we didn't wheel uh, whatever it is we were trying to wheel. I guess Lion Sash is probably the best one to take there. All right, going into pack three. Any time walks? No, there is a Triumph of St. Catherine, 5 mana, 5-5 five, five lifelink. It also has Miracle, and when it dies, it goes into the top 6 cards of your deck. It's a pretty neat card. Ugh, the best card here is Reanimate. I, I don't like that, because we just have no real hope of playing it. Forensic Gadgeteer would be a nice wheel. I've got some artifacts I'd play it. I guess I could just take Misty Rainforest. Ugh, not loving this pack, but sure, I'll, I'll, I'll take a Misty. I don't really want to hate a Reanimate here. Oh, there's Crater Hoof. There's Mishra's Workshop. Workshop's really good with a... Uh, oh yeah, you can cast it. As additional cost to cast this spell, you can pay two. I guess the Workshop can only pay for the two of the mana in this, I think. But it might, it might, that might not be true. Um, I can play a Ballista, Mightstone. Yeah, I think the Mishra's Workshop also might wheel. I don't care too much about Crater Hoof. But Flooded Strand looks pretty appealing. Having a bunch of fetch lands is nice. I really wish I had that Titania. There's also Coalition Relic. I could take Workshop and try to wield Coalition Relic. Maybe that's better. I just, I guess the Flooded Strand doesn't do that much for me. And Workshop, I just want a way to make my deck a little bit faster. And I think uh, Workshop could help with that if I pick up a few more artifacts during the rest of this pack. I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe that was a little bit reckless, but I, I just feel like... The biggest risk with these decks is just that they're too slow. Huh. And then this pack has a Solitude. See, I knew Zurg wasn't playing white. Uh, but I don't think Quiniac is... Like, they passed really late white cards too. So I don't think I'm going to hate the Solitude. I'm just looking at Memory Jar. Sorry, Memory Jar, Lion's Eye, and Sahili. Jar would be nice. LED doesn't actually do a whole lot for me here. I, I'm, I could either take Sahili or Jar. Sahili's really nice with Urza. And I've got some cheap creatures or cheap uh, spells to play. Yeah, I guess I'm, I'm more into Sahili here. Now there's a Parallax Wave. Oof. Hallowed Fountain makes it so Windswept Teeth provides blue and Misty provides white if I care about that. There's also just taking Dismember. And there's also Sacred Foundry makes Windswept Teeth into a red-green duel for Moloch, but I actually think I'm just going to take Dismember. Dismember's awesome. And now Chariot is great with Workshop, and it's good with uh, Natural Order as it gives something to sack. And yeah, I think Chariot's just overall pretty good. There's an Uro that I wouldn't mind coming back, and some blue-green stuff if we could get that. Oh, there's a Fast Bond? Oh, Zernor Fast Bond. I don't have, but Ramanup's already gone. This is pick six. I guess I know I'm not getting any anything to go with it. I could take Ren and six. I have two fetches. That is kind of nice. Wow, it's a late fast bond. I, I guess if I knew I was getting the fast bond, I would have maybe operated a little differently too. I could also take Deathrite Shaman, actually. Hold on. I have two fetches and a wasteland. Yeah, why don't I just take Deathrite? Deathrite's awesome if it works. And then now, Forensic Gadget here came back. I guess the Sail into the West did come back when you're looking at fast bond, but I, I just don't think this is a fast bond deck, really. Pentad Prism looks like it's pretty good. The Talisman is better with Workshop, and Talisman also looks pretty good here. So let's just do that. And if Forensic Gadget here comes back again, I'll be happy. Coalition Relic was what I hoped would come back. And then now the Jar didn't, but Time Spire, Time Warp did. So did Kite Sail, Arsonist, and Battle Ball. But I think I'll just take Time Warp. I like Time Warp with some of the cards in this deck. And we ended up in a kind of weird mix of a deck here, for sure. But... I think it's uh, I think it's reasonable. And then here, there's a Beseju, a Terra Sunder, a Mana Confluence, I just Hallowed Fountain. So basically, do I want Heath to be a blue green land more, or do I want a Beseju? I think I just want Heath to be a blue green land. I don't think Savannah actually does anything for me. I have no white cards I want to cast. Making Misty into white doesn't do anything. Meticulous Archive is also a card I could play, but I have this Talisman. A blue-green Talisman is interesting. Would I actually play the Talisman? Um, I don't know that I would. Yeah, maybe, maybe I will, I guess. I, I, it's at the very least better than the blue-white Talisman. That That's relevant. I just don't think I'm playing any of these lands. I don't care about passing a Tribal Flames. 
All right, so I cut the candelabra. Now there's red and six. Red and six, I have a red talisman. It can pick up Wasteland or my two fetches. No, I guess Zernorb's also out. Yeah, I don't think I'm playing Blightsteel and I'm not playing another Talisman. I don't know that I'm going to play Red and Six. Oh, Sail into the West is interesting, though. Pentad Prism is also kind of nice. This I don't think I'm going to want Sail into the West in this deck. And I guess I'll take a Wither Bloom, or maybe I'll just take Flicker Wisp. And boom. All right, let's see how this looks. All right, I think I'm gonna cut Natural Order. I don't even think Natural Order for Woodfall Primus is that amazing, and that's my only target. Moloch's a really bad secondary target, plus I just have the three small creatures, but that's fine. Uh, right now, this would be 13 lands plus a Mana Crypt, so should cut another couple cards here. Not too many more. I think Woodfall Primus for Flash is still legit, though. That's just a really good combo, especially with two copies of Flash. And... I guess I could cut, I could cut a talisman or something. I could also just cut, at this point, Delighted Halfling, Avacyn's Pilgrim. They don't really produce mana that I want that well. Like, I guess Delighted Halfling casts, eh, Halfling casts a Healy. But I could probably cut, and it casts Urza, but I can cut the other ones. It doesn't cut cast Motlock, unfortunately. I'll, I'll just cut the Pilgrim, I think. Probably want to cut at least one more other card. I do like Sylvan Carrytid as well. I guess I could also cut Deathrite Shaman. I have three lands that go to the graveyard, but if you don't draw one of those, it's it's quite poor. Oh, and then I can also cut Green Suns. Basically, I'm cutting all the green cards, which I think is fine. I'll, I'll still play green for Halfling, Carrytid, Chariot, and then maybe sometimes casting Woodfall Primus. Plus, I'll splash Moloch off Coalition Relic, Talisman, Pentad Prism, and... Uh, I don't even know if I need a mountain, to be honest. And... Oh, there's also a red-blue artifact land. Yeah, that's worth playing for sure. I don't think I need Talisman, Xurnor, Renin 6. No, none of those cards. All right. I think this is actually what we're going to be like. A 16 land plus a mana crypt. And a lot of ways to draw cards. Sensei's top. Workshop is also a pretty nice one here. Yeah, this looks like a pretty solid deck. The green stuff didn't end up flowing, but uh, I think the pivot into blue actually worked out pretty nicely. All right, my teammates, we've got Folero on... Ooh, the domain deck with Territorial Kavu. No sign of Draco, unfortunately, but Leyline Binding. Uh, some good, some green acceleration. Bunch of lands. Tribal Flames. Yeah, this deck looks solid. Oh, Time Walked. Love that. Yeah, all right. This deck and a regrowth for the Time Walk. Not bad. And then Dan, whoa. Let's... let's Get a little bigger here. It's got a Mox Jet and just kind of like a black-white. Oh, black-white mid with Show and Tell Recurring Nightmare Through the Breach with Emrakul, Ashen uh, Rider, Atroxa. Yeah, but he, he got all the white cards, Parallax Wave, Solitude. Great. I, I'm, I'm glad that ended up working out. I was pretty sure passing those white cards was fine. All right, I'm on the play against Quiniac here, and oh, well... <laughs> This is a turn one Mana Crypt Talisman Sylvan Karyatid into turn two Time Warp, and I just have to hope to draw any any sort of action. Honestly, even like a Woodfall Primus, I'd, I'm one mana off of casting it at this point, so that would be pretty sick. Uh, Trinket Mage, Urza, just like any card that costs three or more mana would be just an incredible draw here. Okay, Once Upon a Time hitting a Noble Hierarch. Well, that's... How the, what the card is supposed to do, right? Find your one drop. All right. Let's keep the, the duels in hand because of, uh, or the fetches in hand because of uh, Sensei's top. Time warp myself. Let's go. Can I get a little action? Can I get a little action? Oh, that counts as action for sure. All right. Might stone a weak stone. I'm going to draw two cards. I have so much mana that I think just drawing is going to be way better. And yeah, let's get this Asika's Chariot into play. I think that's going to be my best plan here. Might stone a weak stone, paying dividends. All right, so turn two, I have, let's see, six, seven, eight, nine mana, ten mana, and an Asika's Chariot in play. Pretty good. Pretty good. Let's uh, lose some more flips. Um, all right, well, unfortunately bricked this turn. Gonna attack and make another token. I guess I'll cast the Sahili since I have some defenders for it. 
but I, there's no real even point. I'm just going to play the Misty and just pass. I don't think casting Sahili does much for me. I have nothing to trigger it. It just gives Gwent something to attack with Tireless Tracker. All right. Need to draw something here. And let's see, Nature's Lore. That's not too scary into whoa, another basic forest. We had mono greens here. We crack in a clue or cast on a spell. Well, Grim Monolith, okay, could crack two clues. So I guess Tireless Tracker is kind of big now. Yep, it can bat it's gonna be able to battle with this chariot here, which I think is fine. The other thing is Sahili, I can't, copying another one of my artifacts doesn't do much. Oh, there's And there's a scavenging ooze. All right, let's go, any piece of action. All right, won that flip. All right, the fire alarm started to go off, but uh, we have survived. All right, let's crew the chariot. Let's send it in. Losing this game is going to be annoying, but uh, yeah, certainly could happen. Currently, I don't even know if I'm ahead here. Like, we're trading off uh, we're pretty comparable life totals. Quinn has four cards in hand plus a clue. I have nothing. I have way more mana. So if I draw, like, if I draw Urza or Retrofitter or Trinket Mage, you know, there's some cards that just one card can, like, completely blow this comp open. But currently I don't really have a whole lot. Corsair hitting a land. Right. I mean, I guess it's close. You've got three cards in hand, land on top. The ooze can be a 3-3. Three, three. That's not that bad. I mean, I'm not attacking anymore, unfortunately. But I feel like I've got... Oh, we've got plays. Let's see. If I'm going to lose the mana crypt flip or not. All right. I won the flip. Oh, and there's a spell seeker. Okay. What does that get? It doesn't get that much, honestly. Not at this point. Because the Green Sun Zenith is no longer in the deck. The Flash doesn't really do much for me, so it's Mana Leak. Ye yeah, boy. Let's, uh... Hmm, I'll tap this, I think. Cast Sahili. I figure if I, have, if I have Mana Leak up, might as well have a Sahili at the ready. And I don't think I need to play the Forest. I don't really have a great reason to. And attacking here really doesn't accomplish anything, so... Not going to do that. Get to crack the clue, and if you want, eat the tireless tracker. Crater hoof behemoth. Well, I at least have mana leak. So, but that puts a that puts a pretty fast clock on me because Quinn has. Oh well, first of all, fast bond coming up. But second of all, grim monolith. So even with this in play, Quinn's only two lands, and I, I already know he's going to play a land from hand this turn. Two lands away from untapping Monolith and casting Crater Hoof with Monolith or Mana Leak back up. I mean, I kept a six land Time Warp hand, but it was five mana on turn two or whatever. So obviously I'm going to keep that hand. And then from then I drew a Chariot, Mightstone, Weakstone, Spellseeker, Sahili, and Lands. And I mean, these weren't bad draws. I, I guess I just needed one more thing to push through. But I do have some cards. Like if I draw Woodfall Primus, that would help. I would just kill the... The Grim Monolith here. What else could I draw? Taking a look. This is pre-cuts. Oh, Walking Ballista or Moloch would both be amazing. Yeah, I've got I've got some good draws here. Olvenwald Oddity, sure. I mean, it's pretty big, but I can just block it. Oh, you don't get to untap Grim Monolith now? Oh, I actually like how that turned out. All right. This is the turn, though. I need to draw something this turn. Hmm. <laughs> Okay, well, if I if I don't draw anything that does anything, then uh, yeah, I'm definitely not going to win this game. Pass the turn. Yeah, scavenging ooze some stuff. It's fine. Strip mine. Well, it's a good card. But oh, and Ramanop coming up. Strip mine, Ramanop, Crucible, or rather, I mean, Corsair. So I'm going to lose all my lands next turn. Yeah, that's, that land didn't do anything anyway. So you have in hand, Crater Hoof, and one unknown. I don't think I do know what that last card is. So this next turn, I have to draw something pretty good. Really, you're going to... Oh, I guess you turned this into... Well, it'll be a 9-9? Uh, I mean, I'll block with everything. 
I'm happy enough to trade here. It's not that my creatures are really going to do much for me. And time to flip. Okay, trade off the whole team. All right, let's draw for the turn. Lost the flip and drew a talisman. Cool, cool, cool. All right, going to sideboarding, playing against mono green. Do I want tails end? I don't particularly think so. Uh, no, I think I am good to go here. All right, I would like to play first and. I guess I'll keep this hand. <laughs> this is kind of the opposite of the other hand, where here I need to hit a third land. But I have turn one bridge. Turn two, I can play a 1-1 one, one walking ballista. So if he plays like a turn one noble hierarch or something, I'll just go ballista snipe it. And then hopefully this isn't a fast bond. But uh, all right, another three drops. So if I draw a land next turn, if I draw a Mishra's workshop next turn, it is just awesome. All right, pass, and now I've got a bunch of good threes to play, including Coalition Relic, which fixes my mana entirely. Let's see what we can do here. I, My guess is I'm going to draw like an Urza or something and just play nothing next turn, but, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that's not the case. Whoa. Yavimaya? Okay, well, now my lands can cast Delighted Halfling, so I guess that's like a nice backup plan. And a Dryad Arbor and a Strip Mine. Okay, the Fast Bond is really bad news. I don't like seeing Fast Bond Strip Mine here. I guess I'm probably going to lose to that if I don't draw a land here. Oh, I did draw the Mishra's Workshop. Amazing. Okay, so now I can cast Coalition Relic. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to Trinket Mage for the mana crypt here and I'll keep that in hand but I have a quite the hand to use mana crypt with unfortunately I suspect my Misha's workshop is gonna get strip mined here and in fact I'm probably gonna get Ramanop strip mined oh that's a Courser okay Courser fast bond is sick all right land land my coursers have never done this in the history of coursers. Uh, land, land, land. Sure. Please don't have Ramen up as your last card. Oh, Scavenging Ooze. And last card is Ooze My Walking Ballista. Sure. And then Strip Mine My Misha's Workshop. I don't see how you could not Strip Mine Misha's Workshop, to be honest. And then draw. Talisman doesn't do much for me. So... I'm going to play Moloch here, and I guess I will play Talisman and then play Moloch for two mana, which means it's going to come into play as a 4-4. Four, four. And I think I'm just going to eat the Courser because I really don't want a Courser Fast Bond to go off. Now you can play Oko, and I was hoping to get Mishra's Workshop Sakarian Infiltrator going, but... I think we're still going to be able to play it for X equals two or for two copies. In fact, if I draw a land, I could cast it for three copies, assuming my mana crypt doesn't get oko but I didn't think it was that likely to. All right. Land would be really nice here, actually. Drawing the workshop was amazing, though. That, that gave us a lot of play. All right. Well, it's not as interesting. So currently there's a Sakura Tribe Elder in the graveyard and a Noble. So that Scavenging Goose is really a 5-5. Five five. So I guess I shouldn't do that. So I'll cast this with squad two. I think, yeah, I don't think I, I, I'm supposed to wait here because I'm not making any land drops. I get to make two tokens or one token rather, draw two cards and flash and forest. Okay. Land, halfling, I'm not going to play the Retrofitter yet. I'm just going to I'm going to wait on that because I can just put a counter on Relic instead. It's kind of the same. And then this way, the Retrofitter can't get Oko'd. What is this? Oh, they're playing the Lictor. 
Oh, so it did It did cost three. I don't know why it said four in Draftmancer. I, I was so confused. I, I thought I must have messed it up. Okay, it made sense. This is why I put this card in the cube, because it only cost three. Okay, well, I still have a Maul Lock playing defense. If I draw Woodfall Primus, I, it's awesome to... I can flash it in. I can kill Oko and probably Restless Vinestalk as long as they're tapped out. Because you can't kill creatures. If they can animate it in response, that would stop that. And then... Hope for Urza. Yeah, drawing Workshop meant I didn't get completely boned. And right, making another 3-3. Three, three. That's fine. I have some pretty good defense against 3-3s, three to be honest. And Moloch can't even get shrunken by uh, Restless Vinestalk because it's effectively... It, it just stays large. All right, their last card is a Grim Monolith. Are we just animating the... The vine stock? Okay. Let's let's do this, I guess. I feel like I'm gonna block restless vine stock with all my creatures that aren't Moloch here. Okay. So well, I could also kill the scavenging ooze. That's probably better. Yeah, because the ooze is gonna keep getting larger. So the ooze is effectively a six six, so if I block with Moloch and then two Sicarian infiltrators. They have two mana up, two creatures. I think that that works. And then it's still going to be my forces against the world. They've got a lot of stuff in play, but... Oh, and this one even has Trample. The the Tyranid does, at least. Right, put a charge counter on this. I take five going to ten. I, I do have a mana crypt as well. I have to, have to consider that. Okay. Well, I think the Ooze attack was good for me. I think Ooze... Just chilling there would have been a problem. Uh, add a blue, cast Retrofitter, and let's see. Make a token, untap it, sack it. So I guess I can, hold on. Make a token, untap it, sack it. Yeah, I don't have quite enough mana to untap it again, so I think it's better just to play the, the Talisman. Pass the turn. No, I don't want any attacks. I don't think this is looking great here. I do just need to draw something. Okay. Vine stock coming in again. The mana crypt is going to start to add up for sure. And let's retrofitter. They're going to make their token into a 5 5 or 3 3. It's still a 3 3. All right. Let's make a token. And I guess I can't really kill this thing. So I think I'll kill the Lictor and then block. Oh man, I guess actually at that point I should, I think I'm gonna chump the token. This doesn't have trample, all right. And then, oh, actually I guess I should have just Killed, I should have killed the trample token. That would actually have been better. Mm. Sack the servo. Make a flyer. Charge counter. And I go to four here. Oh, birds is the last card. And Oko hasn't even been used yet. All right. Grim Monolith is in. I lost the flip, and I drew another land. All right. Flooded out pretty bad. Maybe we have one too many mana sources, but I don't know. It's possible. We'll have to look at it before round two. All right. Playing against blue-black here. Uh, so during sideboarding, I might take a look at siding out a land, but I, I can't change my deck before. Once you've submitted your deck, you, you don't change it. And uh, this hand seems pretty good. Playing against blue-black, getting a turn two relic, into a turn three uh, Might Stone and Weak Stone is kind of the idea here. Assuming Relic doesn't get countered, which it very well might be. Okay, pass the turn. Technically, I want to wait on charging it until I uh, see if it's going to get dacked or something. What do we got? Young Pyromancer. Okay, that I don't... I'm not too worried about. Oh, Mishra's workshop. Um, yeah, let's let's use the workshop here to play the Mightstone and Weakstone. Oh, hold on. 
I don't need to tap both my lands actually. Let's let's do it like this, I think. Mm hmm Am I gonna get force of negation? I guess I am, yeah. Alright. Next turn. If I draw Ballista, it'd be nice. Trinket Mage, Urza, any of those things. Dak Faden, okay. Steal the Relic. That's why you don't charge it. No free charges for you. Okay, action. Yeah, this this has been a, this draft has been <laughs> very nice. <laughs> All right, I'm either gonna get a token. Or a young pyromancer, or I guess a Dak, but that's not really going to happen. If I can draw Flash, that would be good. I got my one action spell countered, and the rest fell apart. That, to be fair, that is Blue Green's weakness, and I guess maybe I could put in like. I don't really have like a gassy card to put in. Green Suns is just not really what I want. I guess I could put in Tails End against Dak Faden. I don't know what other cards that are to counter here. Mm. But that's about it. I don't know. I, I don't think playing like a Talisman or Zern Orb is really going to help with what I'm dealing with here. Narset. Reveal Time Spiral. All right, all right, all right. We're, we're done here. There's nothing I can draw here that, that does anything. Uh... I mean, I could try putting in a Death Rite Shaman instead of one of my islands, I guess. <laughs> sure. We'll, we'll try doing that. All right. Game two. Well, let's hope we don't get their Mana Crypt Force Negation. If we don't, I, I like my chances here. All right. All right. Because now I can go Coalition Relic. And I don't actually want to play Retrofitter. I want to put a counter on Relic so the next turn I can play Sahili plus Retrofitter. This is a good start. Let's hope we're not getting we're not getting Embreath Shield Breaker or anything, which is nice. Preordain I can I can live with. Alright, put a charge counter on the relic. Draw. And carry a tid. Let's get blue. Blue one Sahili. Maybe this is going to get Force of Negation? Oh, Zorg has found Force of Negation. Oh, they have Force and Force. Okay. I, I don't mind. Honestly, the Sahili getting Forced here doesn't really matter that much. Force of Will, Pitching Time Spiral, sure. Because now I'll just play Sylvan Karyatid, and then next turn I have a lot of mana. I can start by casting Time Warp, but I'd rather Maw Lock if there's a good target. Well, there isn't really a good target because... The Moloch's going to be under the Valky. A land would also be actually okay here because I can go Retrofitter plus Time Warp. It'd be a good use of my mana here. So we'll see what the draw is. Right, Talisman is... Uh, um, let's, let's wait. I, I just don't think Time Warping here does anything for me, whereas now I can put a... I can make a creature with Retrofitter, I can put a counter on Relic, and then I can Time Warp next turn, and I think that's fine. It just, Time Warp gets you so much more the more you do on the turn you Time Warp. And look, I'm probably going to get something dacked here or whatever, but I wasn't I wasn't doing much about that anyway. Yeah, oh, this is not Dak Faden. This is Kite Sail Larcenist. Okay, that's way less bad. What are you going to Larcenist? The Retrofitter or the Mana Crypt? Or the Coalition Relic? Honestly, all of them are... Pretty reasonable choices. I wouldn't mind a walking ballista. Retrofitter, okay. Honestly, that's like the the one I, I would prefer it into. I think that was I don't know what Zerg's hand is, but I think that was good for me because taking out one of the mana cards I think would make my life a little harder. But I guess I guess if you're not doing anything, then the then the retrofitter is a huge threat, so that's fair too. At some point, Urza might make an appearance, but I guess I'm not holding my breath. <laughs> All right, draw. Oh, Sicarian Infiltrator is nice. So right now I've got three. I can play Infiltrator for a bunch here. I can pay it for four, right? I can pay six mana. One, two, three. Yeah, let's do that. And once again, keep the 
time warp plan rolling. I mean, this is this is pretty sweet. Draw, draw, draw. There's Urza, and Urza works really nicely with the Sicarian Infiltrator again on either side. So I'm kind of kind of stoked about this because next turn, I mean, we'll see what happens. But next turn, I can go Urza plus Time Warp in the same turn now, thanks to the the Infiltrators giving me three one twos that tap for mana. Valky's not doing anything over there. Larsness can hit me for two. It's not a big deal. Yeah, this this is looking. This is looking up. Zurg only has three cards in hand because did have to pitch a card to force a will, which was nice. Can't stop Urza with a force of negation, which is nice. I'll take my two. I guess I have a mana crypt going, so I got to be a little careful. And my teammate has the fallen shinobi, so I don't have to worry about that. Zurg does know I have time warp in hand, so they've been waiting for me to play the time warp every turn. But Sicarian Infiltrator, this card's been sick. The sick Aryan Infiltrator. I think uh, it's pretty good with Urza on both sides. It's also just like five mana for two one twos and draw a card is not terrible. Oh, Cursed Scroll. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I guess I have to, if I lose some mana crit flips and take another couple hits off of uh, the Larcenist, that could be, that could be dangerous, I suppose. All right, let's cast the Sensei's top. Play Windswept Heath. And cast Urza. Okay, Urza is active. Time Warp. Mm. Tap. Tap my 10 10. <laughs> and yeah, I guess I'll tap one of the infiltrators as well. All right, I didn't even get. Uh, Force negation. Oh, should I have just spun Urza? Maybe, maybe so. Well, I'm going to draw my stone a weak stone next turn, so that's also pretty good. All right. And I guess I will attack for one. No, no, no. They can just make a 2-2 two -two Moloch, so that doesn't really make sense. Okay, take my turn. Lost the flip finally. Um, let's cast... Might stone and weak stone, and I think I'm actually just gonna kill the kite sail arsonist if it works, because that turns on retrofitter foundry, which is a pretty big game for me, and then I will uh, spin Urza as well. I don't know that Zurg has too much of a response here. Target creature gets minus five, minus five. Pay the ward. Boom. All right, we got a game. It is possible. All right, do I want Tails End? Still probably no. It counters Dak, well, it counters Dak, Narset, Valky, straight up. Can be good against, it doesn't counter forces. It counters a fetch land, which is kind of nice. Is there something I'd want to cut? I think the death rate's actually fine. No, I, I like where we're at. I think we'll go ahead and try this. All right, uh, yeah, I'll keep this, this is, we're playing against a, an opponent who has both kinds of forces, so you really just can't be too aggressive on, on mulliganing. It's not like mulliganing into the flash combo is a guaranteed dub against someone who has two zero mana ways to counter it. Nothing for me to wasteland? Uh, well, you get to miss with Valky. You get to see flash and mana leak, but don't know how much that helps. Valky is a kind of weak card. I try not to play that card. I play it with Bring to Light. That, that is a good combination, but... Otherwise, nah. All right, I'm gonna wait on the Talisman because this lets me keep up Mana Leak and also use Retrofitter. Okay, I'll take two. I don't really care about killing Valky and I wanna leave up Mana Leak. If you wanna play something into it, Thief of Sanity, yeah, I will Mana Leak that. I could try to beat it with Retrofitter, but that just doesn't seem, Force of Willing? Okay, that's aggressive. Uh, play the wasteland because I don't mind having it there. All right, I mean you're gonna get a thief hit, but I guess that's fine because I'm gonna make one retrofitter, and the next turn I can block the thief. Maybe let's hope the thief doesn't hit anything too great. Okay, I'll take the hit. I don't really care about volking either. 
I really hope the Woodfall Primus doesn't get binned with this thief, though. That would be really annoying, because then the flash would be done. All right. Mishra's Workshop and Silver Bluff Bridge. So the bottom card, the card that got bottom could be... Oh, it's a, it's a bank buster. Okay. Make a 1-1. One, one. Bank buster was such a good hit. Wow. All right. Can I get a Woodfall? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Um, yeah, I'm going to Time Warp first, I think. It actually would be nice to hit another land drop here. And if I'm getting Force Negation, I'm getting Force Negation. So, whatever. Attack for one with the Servo. Draw. Island. Okay. Um, unfortunately, I don't really have a play here. I can't play the Might Stone or Weak Stone yet. Or at least I don't want to yet. I'm just going to pass here. Just gonna use Bank Buster. I'm gonna respond by casting Flash. Okay, Primus comes in. Uh, destroy the Bank Buster, and I guess I'll destroy an island as well. And destroy an island, and then I can still make a flyer here to block the, the thief. Drawing the land is really good, because now I can go make a flyer, block, untap, sack it, make a 4-4. And that's a, I think, a pretty good, pretty good sequence. And if my opponent's got a removal spell, then I still get a four four out of the deal. And next turn, I get to play Might Stone and Weak Stone as well. All right, no four four. All right, Retrofitter doing some work. This is kind of why I thought. Force of Willing to get the Thief through is like a little bit ambitious. It's not free for me to do this, but I do get to I do get to handle the Thief pretty well here. And then next turn I'm going to play Might Stone and Weak Stone. Though I kind of hope... Oh, Glint Sleeve Siphoner, sure. I kind of hope they don't have a counter to that. That would be nice. Um, Might Stone and Weak Stone. Any forces? Oh, no. Wait, no. All right, nice. Uh, and then I'm just going to kill the Thief of Sanity. I, I just don't want to risk losing to Thief here. Wait, I don't need to draw two cards. I have more stuff in play that I... I have all the everything I need in play. And then I'll play the Talisman because I can still make a Retrofitter 1-1 one, one off that. And then now Might Stone a Weak Stone plus Retrofitter. Kind of, I mean, this is a pretty good good combination. Just extra mana makes Retrofitter a lot better here. And let's let Preordain happen. This has been a this has been a much better showing, I would say, of the deck. And not that changing one lane for a death right shaman that I've never drawn does anything. I just have drawn a slightly more balanced uh, <laughs> number of lands versus spells here. Drawing the Woodfall Primus for Flash was really nice, though. I did need something like that. Look up pitch to force. Oh, time spiral. Once again, it's the official pitch card of the match here. Okay, well you gotta you gotta do something here. Alright. Hit me down to eleven. Go up to two energy, so next turn you get to use the, the glint sleeve. Let's make a servo. Oh, walking ballista, what a draw. Um, I think I do it for six here. Yeah, this is good, I think. Because this way I can shoot Valky. They kill Woodfall Primus, and then I can still kill the, the Glint Sleeve and keep the Ballista alive. And if this got countered, I didn't want to pay more because of miscalculation and whatnot. And if this got countered, I would ha have... A slightly worse time now I can still can still get there all right one and one on to round three if I can emerge with a two one I'll be quite happy all right let's do a live look in Falero is just advancing to the throne of the dead three Falero is on my team and hit Arwen mortal queen so he went all the way through the dungeon thanks to from the catacombs and undermountain adventurer hit Arwen and this has got to be a good attack because now Arwen can give any creature a plus one plus one lifelink counter, which is, or technically a plus plus one counter and a lifelink counter, 
which is going to mean I think J Bro is in a ton of trouble. He has to block. He just has to chump two of them. Probably worth our winning to gain six here. Kind of regardless of which one you wanted to put the the, the token on. I guess J Bro does get, have a tithe taker, so it'll get to fly over and <laughs> and steal back the initiative. But that isn't have that big of a deal. And uh, J Bro's at five life with a ring, one ring in play, which is going to tick down his life down to three. Can Floro just have time walk just to close things out? No, Preacher of the Schism is not a bad one, though. And a food token here, so it can go up to 17 at any point. This looks like it's going to be a tough one for J-Bro to get out of, given that Floro's now got a 5-5, five, five, a 6-7, six, a 5-7, five, seven, a 6-6, six, six, and a 2-4, so just a massive squad. J-Bro starts the turn with six lands, immediately draws with ring goes up to six cards in hand and has to put up answers to basically not only all five of these creatures i guess the preacher technically doesn't quite get the job done but also the one ring is sitting here on three counters so and jbro's at three so this one's going to be a pretty tough one for mr jbro here all right land into crack sunbaked canyon that is uh signs of an impending apocalypse i would say uh Rather, cracking, starting the turn off by cracking this when you have that many cards in hand usually is not a good sign. It means you don't have answers set up and you're going to spend a land drop and a mana to, to try to find something, which further reduces your odds because now you're on five lands instead of seven and still have all those things to deal with. Like a, a wrath by itself does not do the trick. And in fact, it doesn't. And this means Falero is 2-0. I'm 1-1. Dan is 1-1, I believe. So, uh... We're one win away from winning, and now i got to battle Team J-Bro and see if I can make that happen. And here we are, battling Team J-Bro. All right, I'm on the play. Any mana crypts? Oh, yeah. That's a mana crypt. It's also the worst spell seeker in the world, but uh, that's okay. I think, I think I'm just going to go mana crypt. Well, I'm certainly going to play the mana crypt. I think I'm going to play Talisman and Silver Bluff, and then next turn I can go spell seeker for mana leak. Or I can cast Time Warp, but I'd probably rather Spell Seeker for Mana Leak. I th actually, you know what? Let's Time Warp first. The reason I want to wait is Spell Seeker for Mana Leak is fine, but I would much rather Spell Seeker for Flash. I just don't want to do that without Primus in hand. So giving myself another draw step to find something that ideally gives me a direction. Oh, Bank Buster. Perfect. All right. Let's just take that straight to the bank. Land. Talisman. All right, well, Bank Buster is exactly what I was hoping to draw here. Jaybro can run out a two drop if he wants, and uh, he wants. Hopefully, it doesn't kill the Bank Buster because that's the card I'm really worried about. Oh, Tide Taker. That's not even very good. All right, I lost the flip. All right, let's draw a card. I guess I can cast Woodfall Primus here, so let's just Spell Seeker for Mana Leak. And I. Yes, I'll play the forest because I don't want him to know about the the wasteland here. And I can cast Mana Leak despite the presence of Tithe Taker. I'm at 14. I have lost two Mana Crypt flips. Yeah, so I'm going to get to to wasteland the Sunbaked Canyon most likely here. Glimmer Lens. Uh, yeah, I'll Mana Leak that. I, the fact that I'm going to get to wasteland the Sunbaked Canyon makes me pretty happy to, to do that. Mana Vault. Okay, well, I guess I... Couldn't mana leak the next play anyways, maybe, who knows? All right, any Urzas, time for an Urza. No, how about another land? All right, I guess I'll draw first. Oh, Infiltrator, hold on. Well, I definitely want to wasteland that, and I can still play Infiltrator. I'm going to cast it here with a squad of two or, and sack my treasure. I don't want to wait because of the Tithe Taker. It doesn't really make sense. Draw, draw, draw. Wow. Really bad set of draws, to be honest. But Sensei's top will help. Next turn, I get to attack with Bank Buster, which is nice. I need to not lose every Mana Crypt Flip because I am playing against a deck with Fiery Confluence in it. Yep, there's the One Ring. That's fine. Can I get an Urza? Urza would be a lovely draw. All right. I lost the flip again. 
we're just speed running losing flips here. Let's play Sensei's top and spin. There's Urza and Retrofitter. All right, well, we want this Urza bad. So let's draw a card. Land Urza. And let's start doing some Urza spinning, shall we? Two, three, four, five. Hit Delighted Halfling, sure. And can I Urza one more time? One, two, three. No. I can't quite, but I can cast a Trinket Mage. And there's no point in attacking here because uh, the one ring means I can't get damage through anyway. Okay. And then I'm going to Trinket Mage. What's in my deck here? Ballista, Sensei's Top, Retrofitter, Woodfall, Primus, Moloch. I'm just going to get Sensei's Top. I think I want to get Top because with this Mana Crypt out and with the One Ring out, all that, I kind of want to close out the game. And I don't think Retrofitter is actually going to be the right fit here because I'm already in, in the uh, kind of danger zone with Fiery Confluence just killing, nugging me for six and I'll lose a mana crit flip and I'll die. So I think finding ways to, to get this done is going to be good. j is going to take two on upkeep now, thanks to Mana Vault, plus the one ring. He's going to get to draw two. He's also got Chandra in his deck and Fire Blast, so really not the deck to lose <laughs> every flip against Mana Crypt with, but uh, you know what? There, there we are. If you didn't have the Mana Vault, then... Then that would have he would have gotten slowed down quite a bit by that wasteland. All right, well we're not getting confluenced or fire blasted quite yet. Urza is getting flame slashed. Yeah, that is pretty bad news to be honest. Okay, I lost the flip again. There's ballista. All right, let's just slam a walking ballista for the max amount here, and I guess. Yeah, if I had to Urza still, that would be even sicker. All right, well, let's go. Ballista for six. Shoot the Tithe Taker. Shoot the Knight. Shoot the Knight. I mean, I'm sure I'm just dead to shoot the Spirit Token. Crew the Bank Buster with the Pilot here. And j -Bo's dead? That... Seemed like a premature. Oh, wait, no, I have the construct. Never mind. I, I forgot I had the Urza construct. All right, well, there we go. We got him. We got him. All right, I thought I was I was a little surprised by that. All right, so now Tails End once again can counter the One Ring, can counter Chandra. Zernor might actually just be kind of good. Fiery Confluence is going to mess me up no matter when he draws it. That actually makes me not want to cut a land. I think, I think I like where we're at here. All right, so game two. Yeah, I'm going to keep this hand. It's got no uh, Mana Crypt. I've drawn Mana Crypt a lot, which is nice, though I did lose one of the turn one Mana Crypt games. Uh, this hand is turn one Halfling, turn two Bank Buster, plus maybe Wasteland U. And if I draw Woodfall Primus, Flashing Primus is amazing. All right, J-Rum will to five. And is going to turn one Fetch Sacred Foundry. Cast an Esper Sentinel. Um... I'm going to cast Tafling. I don't know that I'm going to bank... I'm probably not going to bank buster into that. Oh, he didn't play a land. Well, I don't want to give him a card here. Oh, this is actually perfect then. Let's just go Wasteland. Sensei's top. Pay one. Pass. Jibro. Mold of five and got Wastelanded here. He's going to whack me for two. I'm just going to draw for my turn. Dismember is not super necessary. Let's play Reckoner Bank Buster, pay one, pass. Still don't really see a reason to, to Sensei's top. And I think we're going to get a little 2 1 here, aided by J Bro's Mold of Five. <laughs> Talisman, yeah, we'll pay, play Talisman, pay for Esper Sentinel, and then pass with the Halfling up. But really, what I'm going to do is, is Bank Buster and getting taxed on Esper Sentinel every turn just isn't that big of a deal. I, figure, I feel like if J-Bro doesn't draw a land this turn, he, he's got a shot of conceding. Oh, he's never give up. Battling with Esper Sentinel in for a point of damage here. Okay. Let's crack Bank Buster for a card. Yeah, let's just draw Misha's Workshop to, to go with my Sakarian Infiltrator. 
<laughs> I think I'm just gonna go land. Hmm. Let's play. Let's. We don't. We're not in a hurry here. I'm just gonna play the carry tid and pass. I'm gonna cast the Sakarian Infiltrator for like seven mana. I think is my plan. Meanwhile, Jabro is just completely mana screwed here. Kept a. Oh, oh, he drew a mountain. So all right, we got something going on here. I could even ambush the. <laughs> the the attack the Esper Sentinel I don't really need to spin top yeah I mean all of these are just gonna win me the game it kind of doesn't matter which one I play I guess I should just not trinket mage for mana crypt because I think that that would be a pretty big mistake let's mightstone and weeks weakstone here and I even have a time warp too Oof. kind of have it all. I mean, obviously, when your opponent just mulligans a bunch and doesn't do anything, that makes things easier. Newsflash. But this was kind of a decent draw anyway. Had he had a faster draw, I might have had to just play into Esper Sentinel. But I didn't end up doing that. Next turn, I could cast a Sicarian Infiltrator for a bunch. I could also cast the Mightstone and Weakstone draw two. I could also Mightstone and Weakstone and kill the Giver of Runes. But I don't know if that's necessary either. Okay, so draw. I mean, I'm not, I, we're, we're in like playing with my food territory, not in the like, I'm trying to waste J Bro's time way, but more in the, I think that uh, I'm gonna win this game, but obviously I have to try to do it the right way. Let's draw two. And I'm just gonna draw one off the, Bankbuster. I haven't played a land yet, so I kind of want to play a land. I've already paid for the Esper Sentinel, but I don't really need to sack a treasure to play a Talisman. Let's just pass the turn. Basically, my concern here is losing to uh, burn spells, so I need to try and close out the game such that I don't end up doing so. No, that's fine. Robber the Rich can attack. All right, let's Sensei's top here. Let's go ahead and exile Silver Bluff Bridge. And now I think I can win just this turn. Or effectively do. So I'm at 12. Let's draw. So I'm drawing Misha's Workshop. So I can cast Time Warp. And I can Workshop for six, seven mana. So let's crew the Bank Buster to start with. I think this is actually lethal is my guess here. Let's do this. Let's time warp. And don't want to pay. Let's see. No, you can draw your card. That's fine because I'm going to play uh, Walking Ballista for eight mana here and then take an extra turn. And then on my extra turn, I think I just win because I get to crew Bankbuster, dismember the Esper Sentinel. I don't die to Fire Blast, attack for eight, nine, and then pump, and then use the Blister to finish things off. So that will do it. All right, we managed to scrounge a two-one here. Again, it took a little bit more, <laughs> a little bit, a little bit more drawing of Mana Crypt than I would have hoped. But uh, rather, not that it was bad to draw Mana Crypt. It's it's more that. I, I drew it a lot, and I, did, I still lost a game where I turned one Mana Crypt, which is kind of a beating. All right. Attack for nine, and then Ballista you down. And that's the 2-1, and that is the draft, I believe. Uh, this deck, I mean, it's got some good stuff. Like Urza, Mana Crypt are both good. The Workshop was a, a really great, great pick. I'll grab I, I got all the Warhammer 40k cards, and I had to lend them out to folks until uh, until everyone gets them but i wanted to add them to my cube so i wanted to make sure i could do that sicarian infiltrator really impressed me i just cast kept casting it for five or seven mana and it was great it was good with urza it good with workshop and i think you can even pay the squad with workshop but don't quote me on that i was just going to wait to see what magic online did good with mightstone weakstone it's got flash i don't know seemed pretty sweet and obviously casting it for like nine mana would be a, or a, yeah would be amazing make four of them or something 
Flash Primus was good enough, barely. Moloch was a pretty good card, and of course Ballista did well. Yeah, I like decks like this, and the Workshop and Mana Crypt really kind of pulled it together. That's, that's what I was missing. So, that'll do it for today. Hope you enjoyed one of our first looks at these Warhammer cards, but uh, I was impressed. And uh, I'll be back tomorrow with another draft, and I hope to see you there. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. It helps out the channel, and you won't miss a single draft.